Tell them why we were late. Good morning, guys. Uh, CJ Adams here down at the Blackhawk. We are still in no way. Boats hauled out for those of you that don't know. We are wrapping up our winter maintenance as far as painting, buffing, waxing, cleaning, oil, you name it, engine room. We do it all. When we haul out. Painting um, the engines, painting the engines. There's, 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 ship shape, there's Greg engine. sitting down, relaxing. You can show him, Randy. Show Greg sitting down. No, don't show him, Greg. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're just about ready to go back in the water. Probably, yeah. I'd say, uh, beginning of uh, Monday. We're going back Monday. in Monday. You don't go back in today. Today's Friday. Bad luck. Um, never, want, never launch a boat on a Friday. We, uh, Randy, be careful. You're going to walk in that house. I know. I know. A couple <laughs> things came up last night. That's why we didn't do our average Thursday night seminars at 7 o'clock, but we are here this morning. Um, basically today we are going to go over or try to go over everything for the most part that we've already discussed. You know, there's, it's coming to the end there's, here. There's been a lot of people asking about uh, things we've already, topics we've already covered. So we're going to try. Hopefully the basis. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we're just going to just touch on them real, real quick. And Randy, uh, if, if there's a question that pops up, if you guys have questions, we're going to try and get Randy to to stop us in the middle of it uh, right then and there so we can try and address them because I know we miss a few here and there. You know, uh, we could take a few extra minutes and answer a couple, but we want to kind of address everything that we might have talked about or may not have talked about as well. So if you have questions. Maybe we were thinking about talking about it and yeah. we didn't talk about it. Uh, and I mean, this is probably what I'm going to be one of the last couple of seminars we do just because we're going to be back we're in the water. We're going to be back in the water fishing. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Starting out. Uh, can we start off with this? We can start I think this, yeah, is, no, it's, this, it's, is, a big, this yeah. is a big deal. For those of you that don't know, guys, uh, we use them all the time on the boats, us mates. We all have a de-hooker. Now, for those of you who don't know what a de-hooker is, Greg's holding it. But one of the things we see all the time, and, it, and, it, and it's so bad, I know everybody wants to release fish and take fish, but how many times do they catch a bluefish? And I, and I hate to point it in directions, but you know, a lot of skiffs, a lot of small boats, they catch a bluefish, they flip it into the boat, they chase it around the boat, they grab it, they stick their hand under the gill, they hold it up for a picture, they de-hook the thing, it's bleeding at the gill, and then they let it go. Yeah. There's easier ways. There's easier ways. You have to understand, to begin with, these fish have got a mucous membrane over them, okay? And when you, like we tell people on the boat, don't grab them sea bass and for Any kind of fish. Any too. kind of fish with a, with a cloth, because if you use a cloth, Okay, you're you're taking that mucous membrane off that fish, and that's its that's its defense mechanisms against disease and everything else. So this is why we use and, and a lot of the boats and a lot of skiffs, but some don't, a D hooker. I mean it is the fastest, most efficient way. You don't have to touch the fish, you don't even have to bring it in the boat. You grab the you grab the line, you slide that thing down to the hook. And you and you you slide it down. So you got a fish hang, pretend you got a fish hanging on. And you put it there like that. You slide it right down, and you just give it a snap, and it snaps that hook right out of that fish's mouth. You don't okay? even have to touch them. You don't touch the fish. You don't hurt the fish. Now, granted, some of them are way down in their throat, yeah. a little bit different. Yeah. But for the majority of fish, it's so efficient. It's so inexpensive. This one happens to be a store bought one, but yeah. we. We, we make, make up, we make we make up a bunch of them. Here's one that we made. This is one that makes. I think Steve, our mate, uh, made those for us. Brian, Brian Watchers, Watchers Machine Shop makes what them. Happened them what happened to my nice red guy with the handle? I don't know what happened to him. He's around there. The Probably. That was a nice one, too. But anyhow, do yourself a favor and have a bunch of these around the boat. And I know you want to you want to help the industry and, and return them fish safely and everything. And a lot of people say, well, it, it swam off. Well... Even if it's gills busted and it's bleeding profusely, it's going to swim off. Not to mention, not only hurting the fish, when those fish are biting, uh, this saves a lot of time. Oh you know, my God, it's are, quick. When those fish are biting, you want to get them back in the water, get your jig back down to catch them. CJ, what do those cost? Someone wants to know. They're, Anywhere they're not from, much. I mean, yeah. People Eight can to twelve dollars. A couple bucks. You can make them for, to yeah. Ten, twelve bucks. Uh, but they're... They're worth it. And as long as you take care of them, and they don't break. These ones have been around for a long time. Uh, storm properly. Don't leave them out in the rust. You know, the, too rust. But, the question uh, went away, but I want to ask you for it, so I, I can't see yeah, it. Yeah, no, anywhere from a couple bucks to... Uh, to what was the we're, we're planning on spring uh, codfish and uh, squid, uh, whatever. Squid for certain. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be... Cod fishing, we're going to go into water this week, this Monday, and uh, we might do, depending on what everybody wants to do, Captain Matt's in the background there. Uh, if he wants to go cod fishing or not, I assume just to 
What are you saying, Captain Matt? Catcher, we're trying to catch a few. He's, he's give, he don't want to say nothing. He's, you, you ever see the thing Home Improvement? What, what's the guy's name? I don't even Over know. the fence there. He's Wilson. Over Wilson. That's Captain Matt. He didn't want to say, yeah, we're going cod fishing. He went. I set my liaison. There he is. Oh, oh, there's, chief with there's, 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 there he is, big chief. There's chief. Um, okay, another. let's take another pot. How about diamond jigs? Diamond jigs. Go ahead, I'll let you do this one. We, uh, we use a certain type of diamond jig. Uh, the way everybody makes a diamond jig, everybody has them in their tackle boxes. All diamond jigs are not created equal. No, some go down faster, some work, some catch better than others. And they're uh, slow pitch jigs, so you can't get yeah. confused. Oh, I'm confused with the slow pitch. But this is your standard striped bass, bluefish diamond jig that you see on our boat, and you probably have quite a few in your tackle box. Not this certain one because we have these made for for, for us. us. Uh, this is a hammered diamond jig, 10, 12 ounces. To a seven or eight oh side wash hook. Now the side wash hooks, in our opinion, now remember this is our opinion, work the best as far as holding the fish, getting it back to the boat. Uh, they make all different ones. They're a little bit more expensive, but, but the, we use them all the time. The they side they catch better. They do. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, they catch better in this application. They tend not to straighten out, but the object of the diamond jigging guys is when Greg or Matt or whatever boat you're on says to drop them down. You let this diamond jig go all the way to the bottom, okay? And I know they call it diamond jigging, you know, everybody thinks you want to jig them, but, you know, in our theory, it should be called diamond winding because you're not really jigging it. You let it hit the bottom, you're immediately engaging that reel and taking six, eight, ten turns nice and fast, uh, get it off the bottom. The boat's drifting. As you start coming up that bank, I don't know if you want to show them what, what I'm talking about. When you drop it, you keep reeling up. I don't want to show him. Okay, he doesn't want to show you. But in theory, every time you drop this back to the bottom, it's fluttering, okay? Do you want me to show him? You better show him. Do you think it's important? It's pretty it's important. important. When are we going for porgies? That's what everybody wants to know here. Uh, we're probably going to start porgy fishing right around 1st of May. It all depends on when they show up, though. You know, You know something interesting. Are we done with this? Because i got another slide. Go ahead. You can change. <laughs> something very interesting about porgy fishing that, that, that I find, at least I find interesting. You know, these, these fish winter outside towards the continental shelf 40 uh, 50 60 fathom 70 fathom of water and and what happens with the porgies at least in our area if you look at if this is montauk point let me draw with this i i think this is uh pretty interesting this is the eastern end of long island okay here's the lighthouse okay these porgies the draggers offshore are going to catch them first I'll get a call from a couple of guys that are saying, okay, the porgies are, they're, they're, they're starting to get them in, in 50 fathom, 40 fathom. But the amazing thing is the porgies have got one mission in our area, well, in all areas, but in our area, they're going up to Peconic Bay and they're going up to Gardner's Bay and they, all the porgies come around this point, okay? And they make their way up into the bay. Now the thing that's unique about it is these come in in the tens of millions. I don't mean tens of thousands, I mean they are as thick as can be. And they come around that point undetected. They don't feed, you don't catch them, you don't see them, but they, they come around that point with one mission, to get up into that shallow water and to spawn up there. Now, if you go down Long Island, there's a place called Shinnecock. Let's just say it's right here. And it's a canal. For those of you that know, it's a canal that goes from the south shore of Long Island up into Peconic Bay. And this canal gets a lot of fishing pressure. You catch striped bass here. You catch bluefish here. Some of them fish, when they migrate up, come through the canal. The unique thing is... They don't catch porgies there. So what does that mean? That means all the porgies that we're fishing on up in here come around this point. I mean, I think it's kind of kind of unique, don't you, Glenn? Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I really do. I mean, you... It is you, because, you know, you think about it, they eventually, after they're done spawning for kind of day, they move back. Then they then they move out and, and they, they just wander around all over the place. Some of them take hold around Montauk and Block Island and, and everywhere else. Now this just doesn't happen here. This happens anywhere 
that the spawning grounds are, like up in New Bedford, the same thing, you know? But, those are different fish. But, the, right. but those are different fish. But the unique thing is that that massive, that massive bio load of porgies comes around that point and you, you don't even know it until they get up into that shallow water. I mean, I think that's pretty neat. And we know they don't come through the canal because all the fishermen there, they don't catch them there. They catch bass and bluefish and weak fish and that sort of stuff. So we know that comes up through the canal, but then porgies don't. Pretty interesting. So to answer the question when we're going to start, we kind of wait for Greg to get a call and the water temperature to warm up a little bit and they start making their way around and then we take you guys out to go catch them, um, whether it's Peconic or Gardeners. Uh, so we're just waiting on those. You know, it could happen next week, it could happen a month from now, we don't really know. So. How shallow is the water? Like it's what? It's just well, it runs, berries, right? There are some shallow spots up to 20 feet, uh, 30 feet, something like that. It's it's very shallow. It's up in the up in Cherry Harbor. It's you can be fishing in 12, 14 feet of water. You know, in fact, you got to be kind of selective. And we're not using heavy sinkers. I know a lot of us, a lot of you guys, are, are accustomed to using uh, 12 ounces of lead. You know, that's a pretty heavy sinker when we're fishing in Montauk. But up in the bay there, we're using four, five, six, eight ounces, you know, it, there's not much current and that's what those fish like. They want that, that shallow, calm water. So you get away with a lot less lead, you know. So when you're buying lead, make sure you got in your, a wide variety. A variety, from, bring a variety. From squid fishing to one, two ounces up to drifting at Montauk, 12, 14, 60 ounces at times. Uh, current Depending on factor. current and wind. Yeah, you know? uh, current plays a big factor. So you have to have the, the wide variety in the tackle box. Don't just show up with every, all the six ounces. We see it all the time. Uh, guys try and get away with the six ounces in Montauk and you're only making it difficult for yourself and your neighbor and us uh, because then we, we get a bad review. We want you to catch them. So use the right stuff as far as that goes. What else? What we, else? What else you want to talk uh, about? I know, I know okay. the next topic that, or the next bit, uh, species we're going to be fishing for is probably the squid. Squid, um, yep. And I know we went over a couple things. Uh, we use the Yozuris, Randy, can you see that? Uh, this is, for one example, a pink. We use the small ones, uh, but sometimes those, those uh, squid like bigger jigs, but we see that the, the Yozuris, all different colors, seem to work the best for us. And the fluorocarbon, this just for example is 15 pound test. Um, we use 10, 12, 15, something like that. Squid, squid have got pretty good eyesight. Yeah, they, they, they're pretty sharp. And there's, uh, we see it all the time where somebody will be fishing with the right gear and the right fluorocarbon and be catching, whacking the living heck out of them. And a guy, two or three people up from him that's using a 30 pound mono, mono yeah. and he's not catching them. He'll somebody catch one. wants to know the schedule for squid, but there's really not a schedule. I mean, there's not a schedule. Yeah. We got to wait till they show up. As soon as they show up, we will put it on the internet. We're going to try to do. And the weather is nice, like we can get away with the weather. We have to get away with the weather. It's a combination of when they show up and the weather. We will post the trips. They are on a uh, limited amount of people. Uh, we're, we're still under the COVID restrictions here. They haven't lightened us up. So we've been taking uh, 30 people all last season, uh, sometimes 31 a guy. Yeah. Don't you love it when a guy makes a reservation and he comes with one Shows up person? Right? Yeah, and, uh, oh, I thought, I thought Joe could, could get yeah. on. You know? well, Someone wants to know about selling tackle on the boat. Obviously, we sell everything. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. we carry everything from any species. We're a floating uh, tackle store. We have, if you guys show up with absolutely nothing, we see that quite often with the, the summer people that show up. We have whatever you guys need as far as rigs, sinkers, hooks. And we sell it. we sell it at a very good price. I'd like to point that out. You will not buy any better tackle for any cheaper price. I we mean, we're not, in the, we're not in the business to make money selling tackle. We're we do business. offer a rod rental as well, for those yeah. of you that don't have rods. Uh, I know we did a lot of, or a couple seminars on rods. On and rods and reels and stuff, so hopefully you learned a little bit about that. But if you have nothing, you can always rent one from us, you know, and we use probably the top of the line rods and reels for that. Uh, I would say top of the line. And we keep yes, up on it as well, uh, as far as maintenance, which is good. Uh, for those of you that don't use this, this is your braided line. Uh, monofilament is, Greg will tell you too, it's, it's old school. Uh, everybody- It's my school. It's, it's Greg's school. <laughs> the braided line is the way to go nowadays for just about everything. And we carry on the boat. This is 50 pound test, Power Pro. And we like to use it for just about everything. There's not much stretch in it, if any at all. Uh, monofilament 
if you don't know, if you're fishing in 150 feet of water, there's probably, I would say, six, eight feet of stretch. At least. At least, because... We used, to, we used to set up, I used to put 100 feet of monofilament on the dock. Mm -hmm. And I used to tell the people before they'd get on the boat, I'd take the end of the line and I'd stretch it. And we'd get seven, eight feet, nine feet out of 100 feet of monofilament. That's the stretch. So you have to understand, when you set the hook here and you're moving it three feet, you're hardly moving the hook at all down there. Oh, we got two Someone wants to know if you can use spinning tackle, and then another guy wants to know a good combination for squid fishing, which is like the only time we ever seem to use a spinning yeah, gear. Yeah, so. uh, the, the spinning tackle, sure. Can you catch a fish on a spinning rod with a, with a spinner reel? We see it all the time. Yeah. Um, ideally, you're not casting from this boat, obviously, or any head boat for that matter. Uh, we would try and recommend conventional rods and reels, especially when you're bottom fishing. Squid fishing, yeah, you could... We we recommend the squid, spin squid fishing. You can get away with light tackle. Yeah, you want to the guy want to know what a good combination for no. rod and reel was well, for squid fishing. It, it's it's hard to say because there's so many rods and reels out there. I would recommend getting a smaller size reel, uh, a rod that's maybe six foot with a soft tip. You know, something that bends a little. You got you can really well, something used for trout fishing, right? Yeah, yeah. trout fishing, freshwater bass fishing. If you go to like a that. good good tackle store, I think that's probably the biggest thing. Is you know you're not gonna. Not knocking Cabela's or Bass Pro or anything, but you know the 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 guys that are in good tackle shops, and 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 I mean good tackle shops, they're going to recommend to you the right thing. If you go in there and say, "I want to go squid fishing on a head boat, be it this boat or what do I use?" and they're going to ask you, "Well, where? How deep's the water?" and they're they're going to advise you. Where some of these other bigger chains, they're going to recommend whatever they make the most money on. You know, I mean, I, we've seen horror shows. Oh, yeah. For example, we were caught fishing back in January. Oh, yeah, that's right. A gentleman showed up and he said, I went to, uh, I won't say where, I went to so-and-so and they sold me this rod, this reel, and they gave me this rig. He said this rig was for cod fishing. It's a friggin' fluke rig. It was a fluke rig, yeah. It was a fluke rig uh, for cod fishing. Yeah, now, no, not that you can't catch them on it. You can. Uh, it's not, I've caught tuna fish on slices of tomatoes, to be honest with you, when it was that good. You know, when they're, when they're that thick there, we were screwing around and we'd hook a tomato on there and throw it, and you'd have two, three yellow fins going after it. But the tomatoes is not your prime date. Uh, Valerie Dixon wants to know if we're hiring. Valerie. Mm, that's Do you know Valerie? <laughs> I don't know Valerie. Do you know Valerie? No. Um, as far as the hiring thing goes right now, we did take out a couple of guys. Uh, a couple we're excited about, so we'll... I'll we'll tell you who I'm excited about. Yeah. <laughs> Let me guess. I'm yeah. excited about Morgan. The golf kid. Oh, my God. <laughs> he applied. you got to tell the story. He applied. And Morgan, I don't, maybe you're listening to this. He goes to, uh, I think he goes to Montville High School. I don't know. He? Yeah, he does, actually. Yeah. Montville High School. I played golf with him yesterday. So when we were interviewing him, I just asked the four people, including Dave, who's here, does, uh, does anybody play golf? And Morgan very sheepishly said, uh, uh, I do. Really? You play a lot? Uh, yeah, yeah, I really do. Now you gotta understand, he's a junior and he's about 120 pounds. Now I can pick him up with one hand and I'm not strong, okay? And uh, I said, uh, do you play well? He says, yeah. I said, do you have a handicap? For those of you who don't play golf, handicap, he says, oh yeah, yeah, I do. I said, what is it? He said, four. I almost vomited. <laughs> Mine's about forty. Yours is forty. <laughs> I played with I played with Morgan yesterday, and I gotta tell you something. And if you're listening to this, Morgan, <laughs> my hat's off to you, buddy. It was like playing with a young Tiger Woods. That guy can crush it, crush it. My cop, my hat's off. He says to me, "I only do two things good in life." He said, "I play golf and I fish." Well, we're gonna see how good he fishes because yeah. he's definitely gonna work on a boat. Uh, during the summertime, but uh, as far as hiring goes, though, we did fill a couple positions. Yeah. Um, so I think we might need somebody. Yeah. We might need somebody in the galley. I, I I don't know. So yeah, you can send us a message or email. And we can keep your name on. Yeah. You know, in case we need to find someone else. Or Morgan, good job, buddy. We were all impressed. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, we can play some fish too. That's what CJ says. I said, yeah. said if, he, if he, how good does he fillet fish? CJ says, I'm going to take him on the fillet board. I'm going to show him what it's all about. I said, CJ, what if he fillets the fish as good as he plays golf? CJ says, I'll slip my wrist. <laughs> no, hats off to you, Morgan. 
Yeah. Great job. Great yeah. job, Morgan. We can't. We're, we we welcome you with open arms on the Blackhawk, and uh, we'll have some good times this year. And you'll you'll get an education just as we did on the golf course yesterday. You'll get an education up there, I'm sure. Uh, I hope. I'd like to go over a couple of things as far as the uh, the gear, fishing wise, as far as foul weather gear, what to wear. You know, a lot of us meet. Um, and this is my opinion. Like I said, I, I wear Guy Cotton and Grundens. Um, they're both they're both for foul weather as far as rain, wind, yeah. snow, anything. This is a Grund this is a Guy Cotton jacket. It's fairly light. You know, I like to layer underneath, yeah. as you can see. Very very light. This one's not insulated, but they sell all sorts of stuff. I'll put on some sweatshirts, some long sleeve shirts, and then throw this on. This will keep you relatively 95% dry. Uh, what do you guy got? just called me. How did he get my cell phone number? Did you? He's a hustler. No, I've said his name was Harold from Springfield. I don't know. He wants to know where to get good bait. Oh, Harold? Yeah, I gave him your number. You some, gave him my number? Some crazy guy at Springfield show and he wanted your Last number. Last week we almost gave out my address. <laughs> now you give him my phone number. Yeah. Sea clams, Harold. Yes, we uh, we get quite fat. We just got a big order in. Uh, what, last week? This week? Yeah, this yeah. week, I guess. You know? So yeah. sea clams, yeah, we get them, uh, we get them fresh and we, uh, and we salt them ourselves and I've got a huge 10,000 pound uh, freezer and we, uh, they don't freeze solid, but uh, we really take care of the bait and we try to get fresh bait whenever we can. And that's a big thing because there's a lot of boats that use terrible bait. I mean, you hold it up and it's like, it's like a <laughs> snot, I hate to say it, but our bait is, our bait is good stuff. It's expensive, it's food quality bait, most of it, and uh, it's good stuff, but it catches better. It catches better. Hope that answered your question, Harold. Uh, back to the. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay, you back to the, uh, the foul weather gear. These are these are called bibs. Uh, I wear a pair made by Grundens, but they make uh, Guy Cotton makes them. Um, all sorts of stuff. It's your average rain gear, and they're it's a material where it it won't get wet. Uh, I see. I know all of you guys see us wear it, I'm sure you guys have them as well, but if you don't have this stuff, spend the money on it because it lasts forever as long as you take care of it. Get good stuff, again. <clears throat> we see a lot of guys stuff. that show up in sneakers as well. Um, even even cod fishing, we see it. You gotta want to, you want to wear a pair of boots, uh, neoprene, something like that, um, rubber, just keep the water off you. The worst thing is, is a is a wet fisherman. I, Especially in the fall and the winter when they come underdressed. That's, you want to make yeah. sure you're having the right stuff. A wet, cold fisherman, a wet, cold customer is generally an uncomfortable customer. I don't care how many fish he has in his pool. He's <laughs> yeah. still uncomfortable and upset. Um, so bring clothes. Make sure you got the right stuff. You can always take it off. Uh, you can never put it back on if you don't have it. Um, did I uh, did I talk about the pollock fishing with Kenny Broder last time? I can't remember. I don't Under remember. the light? Uh, I don't think so. Can I tell a story? You go right ahead. Can I tell a story? <laughs> yeah, okay. Right uh, Kenny Broder used to be my mate. He is the manufacturer and owner. Hold up the striker snacks. Um, we'll give him a little plug here, you know. Bucktails. Good, good bucktails, man. If you're going into a tackle yeah. store, yeah. Striper snacks. He's the manufacturer of them. Bucktailing for striped bass and bluefish. They, uh, they're top of the line. Striper snacks. So I'll tell you a funny story. When we were, when we were catching... Uh, my, my buddy, who's uh, Jerry Betsy, who's one of the editors of uh, Outdoor Life magazine, uh, called me last night, and he loves the stories, loves the stories. So, Jerry, this is, this is for you. I don't know. I hope the people like them, but I, I don't know. But certain things stand out. This is one of them. We were pollock fishing years ago. We were catching them big 20, 30-pound pollock, okay? And uh, I, was, uh, I was under southeast light. And it was a flat ass calm day. It was bright sunshine. It was the same southeast light is a lot of people. Southeast know. light is on the corner of southeast corner of Block Island. And we're fishing under the light in 65, 70 feet of water on particular little peaks. And it's not the best of days because it's flat, calm, bright sunshine. And fortunately, I was the only well, I wasn't the only boat there, but I was the only boat that, that knew what to do there to catch them. And it was a grind. If uh, Andy Ambrosia was there on the Misty or uh, Franklin Rathburn on the Anna R, it, it, we'd, have, we'd have cut him in thirds what I caught. But we spent the day in there struggling, struggling to catch 20, 25 of them big pollock, you know, a few codfish mixed in with. We're using downriggers and umbrella rigs, okay, wire line. Uh, you know, but it was just a grind. It was just a grind. You catch one, 
And because of the conditions, you know, the, the, just the conditions. And there were two other charter boats there from Point Judith, who I will not mention their names, but uh, smaller boats that were, they were following us around, and but they were not catching. They, they were not catching. So anyhow, at the end of the day, we got our 23, 24, 25 big Pollock. And it's time to go home. I got a splitting headache. Kenny Brody's in the cockpit. He's got a splitting headache. And the uh, the customer, I won't name the name, but uh, I distinctly remember who the customer was. And uh, comes up to me and says, uh, "You think we can catch a couple of bluefish?" Oh my God! I just ground it out, man. I'm just I'm exhausted, and you know, bluefish. You know, and I, so I call Kenny up. I said, "Listen, let's." Let's go out. The only place there was a few bluefish that just showed up was what on a, on a little piece of bottom, what we call the camelback. Those of you that fish Block Island know exactly what I'm talking about. 56, 57 feet, it's a rock pile. A few bluefish have showed up there. The My Joy was there that day, anchored up trying to catch some codfish. Very, the tiny little red codfish. The two boats that were with me at Southeast Light because they didn't catch anything all day, and they were watching us catch these big pollock. They're ready for a cocktail. They went out to the camelback to try to catch a few small codfish to at least go home with something. So reluctantly, I said to Kenny, let's go out to the camelback, throw the wires in, we'll troll around, we'll catch three or four or five bluefish and get the hell out of here. Let's go home. So I go out there, we still got the downriggers out, he didn't take them off. We got the umbrella rigs ready. I got to tell you how long ago it was, paper machines, I turned the machine on, I'm looking around. Holy jumping friggin' Hannah, the whole spring run of Pollock are there. You know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. But when you're good and lucky, that's the best. That's the best, right, Walter? So I tell Kenny, I said, drop the balls, man. I mean, drop, let the downriggers go down. The whole, they were Pollock up to ass deep to a giraffe. And <laughs> the My Joy is there. The two other little charter boats are there anchored up trying to catch a few. And we're going back and forth in the middle of them, two, three, four at a time, man. Kenny's in the back with the gas. Whap, whap, whap. <laughs> three back. Whoop. <laughs> Tails hitting on the hitting on the thing, and we're going back and forth. And I said to Kenny, "We we must have caught 25 in a heartbeat." I remember Charlie Burgess on the My Joy with his diamond jig trying to cast the diamond jig out where we were, you know, a couple hundred feet away. And I told Kenny, I said, "Kenny, how long do you think before those two Rhode Island charter boats are going to put the downriggers on and pull the anchor and come back, you know?" So we, we knocked the living jock off of another 40 or 50 pollock, you know, and then we, and we busted them up, you know. Normally, when you're fishing on a pile of fish, you don't want to break them up, you know. You want to stop and turn around. You want to try to contain them fish. You don't want to spread them apart, you know. So uh, when we left, the two other boats were trying to catch them. I got a call from one of them that night, and he said to me, he said, he didn't know me at the time, he said, uh, Boy, he says, I'll tell you, I really struggle with them, Pollock. If there's any way you can help me to catch a few of them, you know, I'll never forget. But that's one of those stories. It's just, man, we just, we annihilated them on that second spot, you know, on a camelback. But anyhow, not a little tail. Ah! Days, days gone by. I went trout fishing this morning. <laughs> he caught two nice ones. I'll tell you, that damn thing must have been seven, nine, eight inches. You know, my buddy, I, I was talking to my buddy the other day, and he, uh, Telling me, he's like, I got a nice one. I said, oh, yeah, how big was it? About two and a half quarters light cans long. <laughs> so, so I called him up this morning. It was the guy, they're, they're in there. And uh, he says, how big was it? About a can and a half of a quarters light long. <laughs> you got a good kick out of that. But uh, we've been trout fishing just to pass some time. And it's pretty good at the local streams, but I can't compete with those stories. But it <laughs> yeah, wasn't. but those were nice trout you got there. I did lose a nice one. Did how big was that one? Maybe three cans. Wow. I've probably been trout fishing 30 times this year. I probably caught 30 trout. Wow. So, really? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Ain't that something? Huh? I'm not very good at it, but when I go, I always go home with one. <laughs> <laughs> one. You talking about the trout? One. Third night. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyways. Yeah, are we about done then? Yeah, we're ready to fish. I know you guys are too. So. Okay, folks. Are those listen. King cans or regular cans? Somebody wants to know. Uh, Probably regular, regular cans. Yeah, <laughs> that big. I'm still waiting for that good one, though. We uh, we want to thank everybody. We got uh, you know we got a lot of response from doing these seminars. We got a lot of yeah. questions. We got a lot of comments. A lot of texts. A lot of stuff on our website and Facebook and everything. So uh, hopefully we can improve on it, and uh, we'll be doing it again here, you know, next year. And uh, hopefully we can get back to the shows bigger and better. Michael Kaluska wants us to come out to Colorado and take us trout fishing. Mikey, how you doing out in Colorado? Yeah, I'd like to go out there. You know. Mikey used to fish with me all the time, and then they moved out to Colorado. But he comes out once a year. We we'll, like Mike; he's a good guy. I'm we'll Mike. see you this. We'll see you this summer sometime, Mike. Keep catching them, you know. But uh, that's right. about it. Count down the days, so you guys keep those fingers crossed. Get your get up. your rods ready, and uh, stay tuned to our website. We'll tell you when the squid are here, and we'll go out and we'll uh, we'll catch a few. Okay. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys. Uh, Right, we're gonna cover a piece of fish, maybe. We're gonna do so. Last, next week is our last seminar, and we will be at a restaurant, and we are gonna be cooking seafood, a lot of seafood. Good. So uh, we'll stay make sure tuned. I make sure we eat dinner before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, okay, folks. Thanks thank you very guys. much. Okay, we'll see, see you, you soon. Day. Okay, take care. Stay healthy. Take a kid fishing.